The Goods and Services Tax has come into effect from 1st July 2017 after the relevant bills were passed by the parliament and the state legislatures. In order to understand GST, first we must look at the indirect tax system of the past and model of indirect taxation which we have recently overhauled. This will be of great help to understand why we actually need GST and what its potential benefits are. What is the indirect taxation system which was prevalent in India? Indirect taxes are those in which the ultimate burden of bearing the tax does not fall on the entity which is responsible for paying the tax. That is, the burden can be shifted. Currently, both the central and the state governments levy indirect taxes on different goods. Central indirect taxes include excise, customs, central sales tax, senvat, etc. State level indirect taxes are sales tax, entertainment tax, etc. Some goods are taxed according to their value, some according to their dimensions, some according to the quantity. Excise duty is levied by the central government on production of goods. Custom duty is levied on the goods meant for import and export. Sales tax is levied by the state government if the sale of goods occurs within the state. On the interstate trade, the central government levies a central sales tax or a CST. Since 2005, Sales tax in the states has been levied in the form of value-added tax. This reform was meant to check the evasion of taxes and correct the double taxation system. The term value addition implies the increase in value of goods and services at each stage of production or transfer. VAT is a multi-stage tax with the provision to allow input tax credit on the tax paid at the earlier stage which can be appropriated against the VAT liability at the subsequent sale. This input tax credit means setting off the amount of tax paid on inputs by the dealer against the tax to be paid at the output stage. Please note that if the sale is from one state to another, the state government cannot levy a sales tax on this sale as it will distort free movement of goods in the course of interstate trade. This is a constitutional requirement. In order to compensate the selling state for loss of sales tax, the central government levies a central sales tax and transfers the entire amount to the selling state. Let us wrap up this discussion with an illustration. Assume that the rate of excise duty, central sales tax and VAT is 10% each. Also assume each person in the supply chain wants to make a profit of 100 rupees. Now suppose a cricket bat which is manufactured in Meerut, which is located in UP, is sold to a wholesaler in Nagpur, Maharashtra, who sells it to a retailer in Mumbai. First, an excise duty of Rs 10 is paid by the producer to the central government. Next, the producer charges a central sales tax on Rs 210 at the rate of 10% from the wholesaler and pays it to the central government. Central government pays entire amount to the UP government. Next. The wholesaler who has brought it for Rs 210 plus 21 tax, that is Rs 231, makes a 100 rupees profit and charges Rs 331 plus taxes at the rate of 10%, which comes out to be Rs 33. He pays this to the Maharashtra government. Finally, the retailer who has brought it for Rs 331 plus 33, that is 364, earns a profit of Rs 100 sells it to the consumer for Rs 464 plus tax at the rate of 10%. Now, the tax paid by the retailer to the government or the consumer to the retailer will be vatted. That means 10% of 464 minus the tax which has already been paid will be the net liability on the consumer. The tax which has already been paid is Rs 33. 10% of 464 is 46.4. Hence, the net amount of tax to be paid is 46 minus 33 is equals to 13 rupees. Therefore, the consumer finally pays rupees 464 plus 13 is equals to 477 rupees. Now, this is the existing system of indirect taxes in the country which has number of problems. It adds to the cost of the product, leaving them uncompetitive, especially in the course of interstate trade. Secondly, there are number of local level levies such as entry tax and octroi. Third, 
there is a time delay and complexity in administration due to multiple authorities which collect taxes these problems resulted in increased costs monetary as well as human and therefore the system does not inspire compliance as such there is a tendency of everyone in the supply chain to evade taxes the key to increasing tax revenues of the country is to incentivize people to comply with the tax laws simplifying the indirect taxation system holds the key here now from what we have seen above it is clear that what should be the basic objectives of the new tax architecture be it should be able to combine all the central taxes and all the state level taxes together into one single tax if any kind of indirect tax has been paid on a certain value whether to the center or to the state that value should not be taxed again in other words the central and state level taxes should be able to be offset against each other and thirdly it should be easy to administer with a share of the central and state governments clearly defined with these drawbacks in mind we will see how the gst system tries to address them in the next video